of that nonsense. There is no exit plan, but you know what I mean? Like that whole overriding conspiracy that it was this, it was our way to Christianize and, and conquer the Middle East. None of that stuff's true. When I was a kid, when the last few months of Bill Clinton's presidency, I believed that Bill Clinton was going to declare martial law and he wasn't going to step down as president. He was going to set up these camps and he was going to take all the Christians and make us have the mark of the beast and all this stuff. Totally believed that when I was 17 years old. As George Bush's presidency started coming to an end, I'm like, there's no way he's leaving power. He's going to seize power and he's going to do all this stuff and he's going to throw us in camps. I didn't believe he was the Antichrist, but he's going to throw us in camps. By the time Obama was starting to step down, I started seeing all that like he's not going to step down and he's going to cause a civil war. And at that point, I think this is the difference between myself and a lot of other conspiracy theorists. At that point, I had learned my lesson. After Y2K and after all these other doom predictions, when 2012 was rolling around, I'm like, nothing's going to happen. Because I'd already lived through like 10 apocalypses. That's why when I hear stuff about Trump, and I'm like, I've been through this. I'm an old man at this point. I've followed all of this stuff. All of the argument, oh, he stole the presidency. I heard all that with Bush. And, and it led all the way up. Every day they talked about he stole the presidency. It was illegal. He shouldn't, you know, Gore won, all that stuff. And then 9-11 happened. And since people didn't automatically trust Bush already, or because they didn't trust Bush already, when that happened, they're like, oh, he was behind it. It was an inside job. I was 100% a 9-11 truther. Absolutely believed in things like... I didn't believe in the, the laser beams blowing up the buildings or the hologram planes, but I did believe in the, in the explosions inside. I believed mostly that... Uh, the, George Bush let it happen. He knew that the planes were coming and he didn't do anything so he could enact his great Christian plan to purge the Middle East of everyone who's not Jewish or Christian. Absolutely. I turned away from that because I kept, I was investigating it on 9-12, like a lot of people. And I was a big fan of InfoWars back in the day. It was the first time I'd ever seen anything like that. You were getting this immediate information. Fell for it hook, line, and sinker. And I investigated for years and years and years. And always the linchpin was Building 7, Building 7. And then I started seeing videos from the other side of Building 7. The building that had no structural damage whatsoever. There's videos that show the other side of Building 7. Huge gash. Huge gash in it from falling debris from uh, the towers. And then the video where they show Building 7 falling like a controlled demolition. You may not know this, that's that's an edited video. They always show you the same video where it just pancakes down. There's a, there's videos out there that show the whole sequence of events. There's a build, there's a small structure on top of Building 7, and that collapses first, and then it starts collapsing. So that structure on top fell down, and the, just the structural, it was, the building already had a huge gash in it, and once that structure fell down, it was the, that was the straw that broke the camel's back, it collapsed. Whenever you see 9-11 Truther videos, they cut out the scene where the first structure falls down. And, and I've talked about this on another episode. I know the government lies to me. That's just what governments do. It's how they function. It's not good or bad, but that's how they function. I, don't expect the con I didn't expect the conspiracy theorists to lie to me. But once I realized that they were cherry-picking their facts as well, I was like, well, they're not believable either. If they were saying everything hinges on Building 7 and that was fake, then I went back with a more critical eye and looked at all this other footage and started to look at, yes, jet fuel doesn't melt steel beams, but it weakens it, and all of this, all of these other facts. You know, before that I was like, popular science, they don't know what they're talking about. No building has ever been brought down by fire. I'm far more skeptical now than I was then. I attribute that to a couple different things. One is just looking into the facts more, having a more critical eye when I look at anything. This is going to sound funny, and this is a huge plug. My favorite podcast of all time, Parapod, is a podcast with two British comedians. One believes everything, the other one's a skeptic. And it was interesting to see stuff that I believed in. Being uh, with a skeptic, kind of pissing it away in such a funny, entertaining way, it also made me go, maybe I'm mistaken on some of these beliefs that I have. I'm not a proponent of someone who says, you can never change your mind. Because my mind has been changed by facts. My mind has been... I've moved back and forth on the political scale. I've moved back and forth on all sorts of issues. Because I, the facts change. Or I get a new set of facts. 
or I've just grown as a person and don't feel the same way. So I wanted to do that introduction because like I said, I was totally deep into conspiracy theories. When back in 2010, I used to spend all my time researching this stuff. Back in 2010, I came across the website that was titled something to the point of the plan to take over America. It was from a Norwegian group, some sort of paramilitary group based out of Norway. And they had a map of the United States and you could click on each individual state and some states were broken up into zones and it would tell you what the plan was, how they were going to conquer these areas. And I lived in California at the time and California was like 30% nuked, rest of the survivors rounded up into camps. And then I'm checking like Nevada and I'm checking Utah and they're like, Utah, massive exposure to radiation, no survivors. And it was a very detailed map. And I'm reading this and I'm like, holy shit, I just stumbled across this thing. I don't even remember where I found it. I just, like I said, used to spend all my time doing this stuff. And I started to share it. I started to share it with people. I, back then I spent a lot of time on the website, um, Godlike Productions, GLP, godlikeproductions.com. It's a conspiracy website. They're complete nuts. And it was so funny to watch it fall apart after 2012 because again, like I said, I was pulling out of that. I went back there. Uh, about the week two and the week after 2012 just to watch everyone freak out but i shared it with some people on there but i had changed accounts and there was nothing there see if i could find the original link the reason why this story is interesting remember this stuff very clearly around 2010 there was a comet you may remember lnn lnn was a comet that at the time in the conspiracy community people were like this is going to hit the planet this is going to cause massive destruction. And it's going to be the new world order is planning. I believed all that stuff. All that stuff. Anyways, um, I still believe that there are private groups that want to enforce, put their rule on people at large. But I don't believe in like a single group now. But anyway, so the new world order was planning all this and they were going to outlive the destruction. And then anyone who was alive, they were going to take their slaves. Elenin was coming and, and I was freaking out. I thought, oh my god, this comet's going to hit. It's going to destroy everything. And what was interesting was the plan to take over America, that website, a key component of it was Comet Elenin. So it was even feeding more into my paranoia. You would click on states and it would say, this state will be wiped out due to the tidal waves by Comet LNN. This state will be devastated by shock waves when Comet LNN hits. Like, it was all built into that. And so what the website was putting forward was after the Comet LNN hit us, this private army was going to then, their first thing was they were going to attack and then invade America. They saw that as the biggest threat. They saw that, that after the Comet hits, we would either rebuild the old world order or we could take out America and rebuild the new world order. And I checked, I was looking at all these states and I was like, oh my God, like where's safe to go? Like, obviously I couldn't, I didn't, I couldn't go anywhere, but I was freaking out. I was actually talking to friends about it. I was like, what state do you live in? I mean, it was ridiculous. Like I was that level of doom guy. The interesting thing about it was that in the early summer, maybe around May or June of 2011, a message popped up. And I know you're thinking, Jason, how do you remember all these details but you can't even find the site? And fair enough. I'm not I'm not making it up, but you have to take my word for it. If you don't take my word for it, that's fine. If you think I'm just making it up, that's totally fine. I'm not, but I would understand if you said, nah, he's just riffing. Fair enough. It was around May or June of 2011, and the site got updated. And it said, warning, warning, Comet LNN is breaking up may have been taken out by alien spacecraft. We will revisit the new plan in July. I was like, what? That's weird. So it was like they had to, they still wanted to go uh, on with the plan, but the, the comet was now breaking up. They, they had realized there was a structural integrity issue and the comet wasn't going to impact the way they wanted it to or the way they thought they were going to, so. Comet Elenin is breaking up. Possible extraterrestrial intervention. We will come back to this plan in July and figure out what we're going to do. I'm paranoid still. July rolls around. 
and July 22nd in Norway was one of the worst mass shootings. I, I personally think it's one of the worst mass shootings ever. And that was when that scumbag, Anders Brevik, went to a summer camp and uh, was shot a bunch of kids. And I remember reading in the newspaper how kids were like, because it was on an island. First he dropped, a, he set off a couple bombs in the, in the, in the capital also. And then he went to this island and he was shooting up this summer camp and kids jumped into the water and were trying to swim away and he shot them and scum back. And do you know because of the prison system over there, he's sitting in an apartment better than mine. He's in there for life, but... Anyways, Andrew Brevik shot 77 people. And the site, like I said, was a Norwegian. It was based in Norway. But they... It was all in English. And... Um, the shooting was also in Norway, so... Maybe like a couple days after that happened, the site got updated. I checked it regularly. I was terrified. And the website got updated and it said, Listen, this was all a troll. This was all a joke. We have nothing to do with the shooting that happened in Norway. Our hearts are broken over it. This was all just a joke. We are going to just shut it down. None of this was serious. Our hearts and prayers go out to the people involved. So I thought, that's interesting. Like, okay, well, I mean, I guess I'm not paranoid anymore. It was all a troll. The plan to take over America and... and the fact that the comet was going to hit and the reason why they were going to... It was very, very detailed. But again, you know, trolls can do that. Trolls can be very detailed. And so eventually the website, I, I, I just kind of was like, oh, it's a troll. I kind of stopped going there. A couple months later, same year, 2011, August, September, Comet Elenin broke up in deep space. It fragmented fell apart just like the website said I've never been able to figure out how they guessed that deadrabbitradio at gmail.com is going to be our email address you can also hit us up at facebook.com slash deadrabbitradio you can our twitter is at jason o carpenter I swear that story's true. I know I talked about doing short horror stories, but that one's true. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great day, guys. episode of Dead Rabbit Radio Classics, where we listen to some older episodes with new intros. Now, this episode is another part of my personal experiences. This episode, actually, I did not like recording this episode. I actually hadn't planned on recording the stories that you're about to hear. There was some issues with the episode I had ready to go, and I needed an episode. Obviously, these stories are really germane to the topic of the show, but they're very personal to but not only are they personal, they're they're very terrifying. You see, I talk a lot about ghosts, UFOs, aliens, Bigfoot on this show. Very rarely do I talk about demons. Now, I'll mention a demon when it's part of a conspiracy theory, like XXX Tentacion made a deal with Ball Barath. That was like episode five or six, all that type of nonsense. But see, I believe in demons. I believe in ghosts, and I believe that aliens are out there, but in Bigfoot, maybe, probably, I don't know, but I believe in demons. I believe they exist. I believe that there is some sort of opposing force to humanity. So I don't like to talk about it. Because it's not like someone who's into aliens... Even if they're scared of... I'm, I don't... I'm not necessarily... I'm not scared of... This is the weird thing. I'm not scared of demons. But I, I I believe 
that they are a threat 